now uh, when we can try to see we can simply pause the video and you can try to find out what is the problem in this actually the uh, this is typically called stroke protocol now why it is called stroke protocol any person presenting in emergency or casualty with sudden onset of any neurological deficit we always suspect stroke so any new onset of focal neurological deficit that can be uh, paralysis of one arm paralysis of both the arms paralysis of paralysis of leg or difficulty in speech or inability to talk suddenly so any symptom if it is appearing suddenly sudden onset neurological deficit we always suspect stroke so stroke it can be either infarct ischemic or it can be bleed so to see both these things either bleed or infarct we do this stroke protocol which comprises of three things one is diffusion weighted imaging which is dwi one is adc that is afferent uh, diffusion coefficient and one is gre that is gradient imaging this gradient imaging will show bleed which uh, the blood will appear dense black whereas in this dwi and adc we can see increased signal or whitish appearing new lesion that can be into particular territory which will appear black in the same spot or the same area of the corresponding area so for this the corresponding area is this for this the corresponding area is this so this is adc if something is appearing white and black in both this corresponding parts then we say that is it it is an acute infarct so an infarct of less than around seven days will appear dense white or it will show increased signal on this dwi and it will show blackishness on the same corresponding area on the adc so in this particular image it is very difficult to find out but uh, i always ask the students to start to look for brainstem lesion because we very commonly tend to forget brainstem brainstem means medulla means pons means midbrain these three things we should always try to start from the beginning we should see so medulla is very easy to see we simply have to find the foramen magnum through which the spinal cord arises so this is the medulla the lowermost portion of the brain that is medulla which continues as spinal cord so this is medulla which will be almost always circular in fashion it will be completely circular just above the medulla this is also medulla and this is also medulla just above the medulla uh, whichever circular uh, structure you can see is pons so you can see this will be pons this will be pons if you can see this is a pons this is the pons area which is kind of completely circular and above the pons what we can see will be midbrain so this is midbrain so this is midbrain this is pons and this is medulla so always start your examination findings from the medulla now when we see this particular patient has presented with difficulty in coughing difficulty in deglutition and uh, he, whatever he was drinking he was vomiting or he was not able to swallow and this was a particular lesion we can see that there is very dense white lesion in this particular area which is suggestive of infarct if you can see you can compare this with this so here basically you can see this is the all medulla and the medulla almost each and every part of the medulla almost has the same uh, density or same signal what we call it as signal but in here we can see that it appears much 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 denser it looks very very dense white so anything which is very dense white and at the same point on this area if it looks dense black we call it as an infarct so here it is uh, it is confirming that whatever thing is here which is appearing very dense white is appearing dense black here so it suggests that there is a infarct so this is lateral half of the medulla so what we call it as lateral medullary syndrome you can see the same thing here so this is medulla and here we can very very nicely make out that the only half or only outer portion of this medulla is dense black just look out here it is so dense black so this is lateral part of the medulla which is 
appearing to be infarcted and which can be confirmed on this as this is appearing dense black so this is an acute infarct of less than seven days duration if you still want to confirm you can go ahead with the flare imaging so for flare imaging basically what we can see flare imaging is basically fluid attenuated inversion recovery image what we exactly do is a flare is basically a t2 image it can be seen in t1 image also but what we actually do is we attenuate this is the long form of flare is flare f l a i r the f l is fluid this attenuation means the csf which appears white on t2 imaging we attenuate it so we make it black and we do inversion recovery image so we will make the csf white to black we'll take that image and that image will be flare what is the benefit of flare imaging is flare imaging will show all the new as well as old lesions whichever there are in the brain so both new as well as old lesion will appear on flare suddenly which will not be that much evident on t1 weighted image or t2 image so how do you come to know that a particular lesion is old or new it's very simple if dwi and adc or gre these are showing a particular lesion then it is a new lesion and you can simply say uh, that here uh, we this is the medullary part this is medulla this is medulla oblongata we can see this is pons so in pons this if you look very closely this almost same white from scratch to end everywhere it is almost same density or same signal intensity same but see here the uh, this portion appears so dense white and this portion appears blackish or it shows a reduced signal so this shows increased signal it means that this is a lesion this is a lesion if you want to know if this is old lesion or new lesion go to the stroke protocol which shows dwi adc and gre if these show the lesion it means that this is a new lesion for example we can see there are hyper intensities or hyper increased signal lesions this suggests old ischemic lesion this periventricular uh, dense white structure is old ischemic lesion this is old ischemic lesion this is very common because flare almost always shows some or the other very very small particularly periventricular ischemic changes which can be picked up by this now why this is not a new lesion because our dwi adc it is not showing this so if the dwi adc shows this lesion in the dwi adc it means this is a new lesion but in our particular imaging this is not there so this has to be an old ischemic lesion so these are all old periventricular small chronic ischemic lesions which are appearing on flare which won't be shown up very well on t1 image or t2 image or adc or dwi but flare will pick, pick it up very very beautifully so this is a very beautiful image of lateral medullary syndrome now what is lateral medullary syndrome we must know this is also called wallenberg syndrome and we must know only one thing that it is caused by posterior inferior cerebellar artery which is a branch of vertebral artery if you remember this much then you can simply remember all the symptoms of this uh, disease so it is caused by uh, thrombosis or blockage of this posterior inferior cerebellar artery that is pica so to simply remember the pain and temperature is impaired on contralateral side so if the patient has left sided lateral medullary syndrome it means the uh, pain and temperature on the right side will be impaired that is on the contralateral you can also remember this uh, the second thing of uh, the second symptoms of this uh, lateral medullary syndrome is that ipsilateral cranial nerves are involved or affected that is ica so you just remember pica and pica so you can remember the symptoms associated with this Fallenberg syndrome. Now we must know uh, it is caused by because of the thrombosis of pica, which is branch of vertebral artery. Just remember this V. So 
vertigo is extremely common symptom and vocal cord paralysis is very common symptom that is the reason why patient will have hoarseness patient will have a very very poor gag reflex so patient will not be able to eat they usually have dysphagia very commonly so nasal regurgitation of the food is very common cough reflex is very poor so aspiration pneumonia is very common so rt insertion should be done and rt feed must be given so this is how we can remember everything about this lateral medullary syndrome or the wallenberg syndrome thank you